Hello. Hi there. Uh, so this is Miriam Lanzarte. I'm the CEO of Latam Startups. Uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, please, if you are joining this conversation, because we are right, right now in Zoom, uh, if you are coming, just uh, you know, mute your microphone so we uh, you know, uh, continue the conversation. When you have any questions, please just um, uh, wait until the presentation uh, finishes. Uh, we are here as well with our uh, director from Latin America, uh, Rafael Pinto. And Rafael, uh, he is in Brazil. He will be answering some uh, questions in case that uh, you need uh, you know, more information. Thank you so much for your patience. I know this has been a little bit frustrating to wait all this time. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to let you know as well that uh, our community manager for La Campos is, there, is here to take also your questions. If you want to uh, write questions in the chat box, please do that. Or just send it to, uh, you know, to our contact at latinstartups.org. Uh, that will be, uh, you know, at the end of the session that we are being, uh, will be answering the questions. As well, if you have uh, questions in Portuguese, hopefully, uh, you know, um, Rafael Pinto will be able to um, answer those questions as well. Um, in the meantime, I would like to uh, present you, you know, what is going to uh, happen with our programs in 2020 and uh, present you all the programs about LATAM startups or international startups. So again, thank you so much for being here. So first, I'd like to brief you about why we are doing this and why Canada. We noticed many international startups are making big efforts to enter to North America, especially to Silicon Valley. And it is a dream for most of companies that are coming to this market. Uh, it's important to know uh, that USA is a highly competitive uh, market and you have to be prepared to actually get there and no closed doors. Uh, Canada represents that door, not just to the US, uh, USA, but also to Europe and Asia. And we have a strong tights uh, we have uh, this with this market, and it's a very attractive for international corporations. Sorry, I'm going to mute some of you that just started. So sorry for mute you, but uh, you know we are just continuing the conversation here. Um, we have about a white paper about Canada with more uh, deep information about the market in case you'd like to learn more. Uh, if you'd like to obtain uh, this white paper, please uh, subscribe to our newsletters. Some of you have already done it. And we are sending this new version of the uh, white paper in the next newsletter uh, just for you to get prepared about this market and to learn a little bit more about Canada in general. So here below, some of the highlights of the market uh, for those that don't know about Canada. So the first thing is about the uh, geographical, uh, geographical uh, location. Uh, just as I mentioned it, the proximity to the US is one of the most attractive points for international companies to relocate uh, here. Canada trade with the USA is about $2 billion every day through the border activity. So thanks to other uh, free trade agreements, not just with the USA, but with Europe and Asia, Canada also bring opportunities for international companies to tap into other markets. Uh, the, th the second thing is the focus on innovation. So Canada certainly is a pioneer in many, uh, uh, in many advances uh, technologies and allocate a lot of efforts in creating innovation centers. Uh, so one of the examples is Mars Discovery District, the largest urban innovation center in the world located in Toronto. We also have the largest IoT center in the world in a square feet um, uh, and the number, the number one uh, incubator and accelerator in the world linked with universities. Um, another attractive thing about Latin America is the lower cost of business. Uh, so again, if some of you are entering, please uh, just mute the microphone so we can uh, just, you know, um, continue the conversation, okay? Okay, so let's continue. 
So um, the talent also is a basic education. It's free, uh, funded by the government here. Uh, the cost of the education is lower than the other countries in the G, uh, G7. And Canada has always ranked in the first position for its well-educated population. Canada also attracts a good number of international students. Currently in Ontario, the uh, Tech Corridor is providing more jobs uh, in technology than Boston, San Francisco, and Washington together. So this is really important also for you to know. Uh, tax benefits and grants uh, for foreign companies that have established business in Canada are available. The government has uh, incentives uh, to grow their business there. Uh, grants are designated uh, to get more funding and research and development talent acquisition and expansion. There are over 100 grants available in the market for technology companies. Uh, so now, for the next slide, uh, we are talking about how it works. So, once you decide that Canada is the place uh, to start uh, expanding in North America, you have the different alternatives to bring your company here. So, how it works. I know many of you are looking for the startup visa program. And the program for what we, we are one of the designated companies bring international companies under a permanent residence visa, maximum of five co-founders and their families. There is no an easy process, but I'm, I'm now going to share with you what do you need in order to be selected. And I know that some of you are entering, so please uh, you know, mute your microphones before you actually start. Thank you. <laughs> So again, um, so in order to, to actually, uh, you know, enter to Canada and start to, um, you know, look at this market as a potential market, uh, you know, to come here, you need to know the selection process uh, for the startup visa program. So you have to be supported by a designated company from the startup visa program. There are three uh, types of designators, uh, angel investors, venture capital firms, incubators, and accelerators. The first two must give an intention letter of funding, an amount of 75K or 200K uh, for the third option. Um, for the third option, sorry, incubators and accelerators, you need to have a supporting letter that doesn't involve funding. As most of our nonprofit or corporations with no interest in taking equity over your company, most companies try to go for the first option. But it's difficult uh, to get an angel fund or venture capital firm uh, actually supporting your business, and you don't have to have a corporation established, and you have to have a corporation established in North America to actually, you know, get that attention from angels and venture capital firms. So this is very important for, for you to understand that, uh, you know, that besides that the option is there and actually you can go to the website about the startup visa program and you will see different designated companies. Uh, we need to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, to understand that the process is not easy with angel investors. Now, meet the criteria. Once you figure out the, desi the designated company, you just meet uh, their own criteria. You must, have, uh, you must know that some of us have similar structures, but the criteria to receive international startups differ. So make sure you apply uh, that the uh, company that you're applying with, you know, the institution that you're applying with, uh, have, uh, you actually have the requirements to apply to. So in my years working with startups, I've seen common mistakes in startups made uh, while they approach to designated companies. Some of the mistakes are that you, for example, are sending an email asking for information about the programs, copy all the designated companies, or some of the designated companies, um, or, or, or just some of the designated companies. So please, if you're going to send an email, try to customize your email accordingly uh, with the designation of the company. Uh, second, uh, the co-founders, um, sometimes don't read or don't watch the video learning about the criteria and ask questions uh, that the designated company already have answered on the website. So take the time to actually go through the website and read the information that is there or watch the videos that are already there. From each uh, designated company, we have you know, information available already. 
So for most of us, it's very difficult to answer each question uh, you know, that we already have answered in our website because we get a lot of uh, applications from different um, people in the world. So just take in consideration that before you are actually sending an email. Uh, don't send your business plan or deck. Uh, because, you know, uh, again, it's difficult to analyze all business plans are deck and decks when you are actually um, sending an email. So um, if you have like a, a specific question about, uh, you know, the way that, uh, you know, the designated company is doing things or how they, uh, there are not, for example, enough information in the, um, in the website, then you can actually, um, have a, a, a question about that, but don't send the deck or, or the business plan, it won't help. Uh, as for a call or a meeting, when actually makes sense, you know, uh, usually uh, calls or meeting happens after uh, the company has applied on the website. Uh, so before that, it's very difficult to have a meeting or to have a call just because, you know, uh, we need to have information prior uh, the, the company, um, we, we actually come in a, in a call or a meeting with the company. Uh, this is more for, uh, you know, for us to save everyone's time and for, for you also to get information before you actually jump in a call. And learn about other experiences in the past um, from people that already passed through the program. Uh, so that will help a lot to understand your very possibilities on this. Now, uh, so about the criteria. So technology company, technology companies uh, with component of innovation uh, that own IP or uh, is a work in progress. Um, that's important because sometimes uh, what we get uh, from many people is that uh, you know they are asking about uh, what if I have a traditional um, type of uh, company. You know, sometimes uh, entrepreneurship is mistaken by a startup as definition. Uh, so definition of a startup uh, for organizations that are under the designated um, uh, companies is that it has to be a technology company. Uh, technology companies have very wide areas. So just please don't think just in software. It could be hardware, it could be IoT, you know, it depends. It could be biotechnology, for example. But it has to be a technology company and it has to have intellectual property um, in, in between all this. So that's important for, um, uh, for you to consider between the criteria. Uh, it's important to have traction in the local market, uh, have customers or user database, because without that, it's, it's really difficult for you to uh, see if uh, your, uh, your project is actually working. Uh, so it's important for us uh, that you actually get uh, that first uh, traction in a local market before you are actually establishing business here in North America. And be financially stable uh, is also important because North America is very expensive. Uh, this is not just about you, uh, you know, putting your own money on expanding your business and your time is, is, you know, is a lot of costs associated with uh, you know, moving part of your company or having a second headquarters in some other place. Uh, so, not sure who just entered. Okay. Okay. Uh, coachable team uh, is important for us also that the co-founders that are part of the uh, startup um, hear about feedback and hear the mentors and coaches that are coming here. So I know uh, and we all know that you know there is no perfect business and we try our best to help those that require help. So um, sometimes the feedback can be a little bit hard from some of the co uh, some of the mentors. So uh, be able to actually uh, you know um, enter and, uh, and hear other people, uh, what they have to say about your business is important. Uh, just to take in consideration, 92% uh, of the startups that have passed through our programs have changed business model. That kind of tells you that, you know, some of the companies that actually enter to this market, they change a lot of things. 
uh, willing to relocate or have a second headquarters. Many times we have startups that they want to come to this market, but they, there is no co-founders that actually want to live here. Uh, at this point, is if you have two or three co-founders that want to live here, uh, you know, or one co-founder that want to live here, that's okay. But if you have no co-founders that want to live here, there is no point that you are applying for the startup visa program. Once you apply for the program, it's because you're 100% sure that you want to relocate and all the co-founders that want to relocate want to come here. Um, there is no possibility that you are going to be traveling back and forth. At the beginning, that's okay, but not under the startup visa program. Uh, so that's important for you to know because that's a permanent residence visa. So it, it, it's important to, to have that. Uh, now, because we know you require time to know better how to grow your company here, we have established three programs in Canada to help you with that strategy. Um, I'm going to go fast through this because I know you have spent a lot of time just waiting. So I'm going to give just the heads up about each of the programs. So the Scala Bootcamp Toronto is a bar and market validation program. Uh, you meet with the ecosystem, you meet with new contests and potential clients, you basically uh, validate business model and validate other assumptions. Uh, learn about your opportunities and you know how to face challenges. This is a two weeks program that we have twice a year. Currently, uh, we don't have more opportunities this year, but in 2020. So we are opening applications again for this Scalab Bootcamp Toronto. Uh, in September and then uh, you know companies that are selected uh, for this program will come in March 2020. The cost of the program is three thousand dollars American dollars for two maximum two co-founders that are coming here. Now a common question is that if this uh, actually covers flight and accommodation it doesn't it's just cover the program and now for some of you uh, you know, this can be, um, you know, uh, an investment on actually coming here. This is the cheapest program we have in the market because we are a um, non-profit corporation. The next program in the market costs actually $10,000 for the same amount of time and the same amount of uh, co-founders. So we understand that you are coming from emerging markets and we understand that the situation, the economical situation is not same as the situation uh, here in Canada. So. Uh, that's why, you know, we try to work with lower prices in, in the market, but that's at the scale up outcome. So the application process is pretty simple. Uh, you can go either to our website or uh, you know, in the newsletter, we're going to announce when the applications are open. And there is an uh, application process in GUST. And uh, in that application process, uh, basically uh, a setup that have a good potential to enter to the market uh, will um, uh, have an interview with some of us that are deciding, you know, who enters to the program and then, you know, basically we start uh, going through the selection process with those companies. About 15% of the companies that apply to the Scala Bootcamp uh, Toronto actually enter, uh, enter to the program. Uh, some of you are asking about how much is the cost of the program. I'm going to put it in the chat. So in case that you guys are not, uh, you know, um, listening very well, the, the cost of the program is $3,000, okay? i put it just in the chat. Okay, so after the Scala Bootcamp program, it comes the soft landing program. This is a market entry strategy program. It comes for the companies, basically it's an extension of the uh, Scala Bootcamp program in Toronto. So those companies that want to extend the time here in Toronto, they stay for three months. Uh, they run a pilot, uh, they basically identify accelerator programs or other programs in the market where they can continue growing. They incorporate and the idea is to launch a corporation here in Canada. And also we look at the immigration process uh, for some of you because this setup visa uh, is not the only uh, strategy that many co-founders actually take in order to come to this market. Uh, so this three months program is an extension that I said, so when it finished, for example, uh, March 2020, companies extend, uh, you know, so the program is start in April and it will finish about um, around June. And uh, companies that are coming to the program will be featuring the Latin Startups Conference the next year that is uh, coming in June 18 and 19. And you will be able to pitch uh, to our community, uh, 
that is basically composed by investors, uh, government officials, and uh, other corporations that come to the conference and actually see uh, you know, what type of startups we're bringing into the market. Uh, so that's the strategy uh, for the soft landing program. The cost of this program uh, as an extension is $4,500 uh, American dollars for a maximum of two co-founders. Again, I'm going to put it um, on the chat uh, once I finish here. Okay. And uh, then it comes the startup visa program. So people cannot apply directly to the startup visa program. They have to pass through the Scala Bootcamp and Soft Landing Program before they apply for the Scala Visa Program. And the reason why is as per requirement uh, from the federal government of Canada, we need to know your business plan, we need to know uh, your process in IP, and we need to know a lot of things about your company before we can actually support you with a designated um, letter, with a supporting letter to come to Canada. So, um, for that regards, for us, is, uh, is, this is a safe process for companies that are coming into the Startup Visa program. Uh, this is an acceleration process that it comes with sales, funding, and other programs in the market, and here the immigration come in action. So, sorry Eric, I'm going to mute you. Um, so, for this part, um, the program is for four months. And uh, again, it's twice a year. So the next one will start in March 2020 and in August 2020. That means that the companies that are coming right now in September, that are about uh, 12 companies that are coming in September, some of them at the end of the program will be able to apply for the startup visa program in March 2020. Uh, now the application process is a bit different from the other uh, application process and basically it's the board of directors, part of the board of directors of Latam and Startups that decide uh, which company should enter to the Startup Visa program. Uh, in general terms, this is a big deal from, uh, uh, for uh, startups because it, again, it's a permanent residence visa. So we have to take in consideration as much as we can in order to uh, support companies that are coming into the programs. Now, uh, after those three programs here in Canada, we have some other options. I'm going to go through these options again really quick. Uh, so we start to uh, get questions from you guys uh, about whatever information I have passed until now. So the, the first one is Express Bootcamp. We uh, kind of know that some of the companies really don't want to move here. They just need the basics and basic support and information about the ecosystem and contacts in the ecosystem. So in those cases, uh, we actually uh, require that, uh, you know, the companies come for three days, just for three days in Toronto, and then they will establish those um, uh, contacts and will get the basic information to actually launch a company here. It's very intense three days. So we have one coming up for fintech companies now in October. If you need more information about that, please go ahead and send us an email or just send us a note here in the chat and we will pass you more information about this one. Uh, we have a scale up bootcamp in New York because uh, we have a sales office in New York. And then uh, this one in particular is designed for companies that already are selling over $1 million uh, in revenue. So uh, it's important, and for some of you may think that this is too much, uh, but unfortunately the U.S. market requires companies in certain mature level, uh, so they require that companies already pass the $1 million in order to enter to the U.S. market. We have associated uh, programs in New York and some other contacts with government and investors there uh, that can help to grow your company, but that's the main requirement. Uh, for those that are interested in the Scala Bootcamp New York, uh, this bootcamp happens every year in September. Sao Paulo is another one that is coming up. I don't know if Rafael Pinto, are you there? Hi, Miriam. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> So Rafael is our director in Brazil, and he's going to talk just briefly about this bootcamp in Sao Paulo. Great. Um, good afternoon to everyone. So what we're doing with, um, with Sao Paulo, similar to what the experience we had in Mexico, the idea is to invite um, startups and entrepreneurs who are interested in, in getting to know the ecosystem in Sao Paulo, which is the, the, the biggest in Brazil and one of the biggest in Latin America. We, we're 
I joined the last week of November, which uh, to organize Express a boot camp because at the same time that last week, and we have the link we can share with everybody later. That last week of November, the 29th and this and 30th of also happens one of the biggest conferences of of entrepreneurship in Brazil. So coming to the boot camp, which would be on that Monday to Wednesday of that week. We would help uh, coordinate an express boot camp following the guidelines Miriam mentioned so you can get to know the ecosystem in Sao Paulo. And you can take advantage to also join the, the big conferences on the Thursday and Friday. So it's a full week um, and you'll get to know a lot of the big years and connect with investors, with other accelerators, everything you can find in Sao Paulo. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Rafa. Uh, so I'll continue with the last bootcamp that is actually in Mexico. Uh, and that last bootcamp, uh, you know, is, uh, is in June and it's also for companies that want to enter to the Latin American market, but more oriented to Pacific Alliance. Um, Pacific Alliance is basically a counterpart of Brazil in terms of population and GDP. So there you have all our programs uh, and how we work with them. Uh, these are basically a network map uh, of how we work with different people. So uh, the golden uh, dots that you, hear, you see there is the startups that have passed through a program. At this point, we have 46 startups that have passed through a program, and we have about uh, you know uh, 12 more 12 more that are going to uh, finish at the end um, of September. Uh, so at the end of the year, we probably are going to have. Uh, 60 startups that already passed through the program. The two red points here are the offices that we have. Toronto, of course, is our headquarters, and New York is our sales office. And the green points are our partners in Latin America in particular, uh, for those that are curious. Uh, finally, uh, well, our movement, you know, and our uh, people, all that have passed through the program, uh, are people that really have potential in this market. Uh, we get a lot of help from the ecosystem here in Toronto. We have mentors, we have coaches, we have investors. We are part of NACO, which is the National Capital Angel Organization. We are supported by the city of Toronto. Um, and because of all that, we have been able to be the uh, unique uh, accelerator program that works with the startups 100%. So at this point, uh, you know, whoever wants to start asking questions, please. Uh, oh, Perla says that she has already two. Okay. So I'm going to open the chat. So Daniela is asking uh, uh, that she's actually in Vancouver. She's IT consultant with a work permit. Um, uh, can I apply for the startup visa program? Uh, Daniela, do you have to have a company? Uh, do you have to have a company in technology, no consulting, because that's not scalable. Uh, so unfortunately, that's not uh, part of the requirement uh, for, to start uh, in, in the startup visa program. Uh, Luis Felipe is asking about uh, what is the maximum annual quote of the startup visa program for federal government grants. Uh, not sure if I understand that, Felipe. Uh, the government doesn't give you grants uh, to come under the startup visa program. Uh, you may have the possibility through investors or venture capital firms to get an intention letter of investment, uh, but that's really um, unusual step for most international startups. When you come to Canada, you actually have to have enough funding to live for one year here. Uh, in the website, actually, uh, you will find uh, you know, information about what quote is that. Um, I think it refers to uh, how many the government gives annually visas. Oh, how many visas? Uh, if it's about the visas, uh, Luis Felipe, then so many visas is not, there is not a number in a specific from the government. It is, depends. Uh, of the designated companies, how many they want to support, and then go through the process, um, you know, depending of, of the company. Uh, so, I have uh, Ar Ar Arcelan, uh, how already uh, a tech company on that tutoring. Um, yes, you still need to pass through it to 
programs. And I'm sorry to say this, but uh, we have so many other startups that they said that they are prepared, that they have already uh, more than a million dollars in sales. Uh, most of the startups that are in the program, they already passed the one million or three million or four million in sales. They assume uh, you know require a lot of help because this is a new market for them. So the the fact that you are selling over a million does uh, you know uh, it does not a way to skip the other programs. Yes, uh, Carlos. Uh, so you're asking about if you can actually travel between Canada and your country. You still can travel uh, between Canada and your country. Just Canada will be your residence. Uh, repeat the, uh, the prices. Okay, so Charles, I'm going to put the prices here. So the first program is uh, $3,000, okay? The second program is $4,500, uh, $4, and the third program, the setup visa program is $7,000 programs. It's $7,000, uh, um, that's, there are the prices. So I'm going to share it here with you all guys. Um, Based in Dubai, my team, uh, okay. Okay, early estate funding. This, this is a very usual and common question uh, about uh, tax fees uh, for startups and all that. Um, Canada is one of the most friendly uh, environments to actually uh, you know, work a company and you actually get tax credits when you uh, enter your company here. Uh, but early stage investment, we have the network of NACO, we have some other network with, with investors. It's important to you, uh, for you to understand that you have to have traction in North America before you actually approach an investor. <laughs> they are not willing to put investment on you if uh, you don't have traction here. Um, and traction means, you know, to have customers and to have, uh, you know, users and to start growing your company here, which doesn't happen immediately after. That's why we created this program because usually we have seen uh, companies that have passed, uh, you know, through this process and it takes years for them to get, uh, you know, to the level that investors want to see. Uh, okay, uh, so Daniela, you said you have income in Chile and Vancouver as IT consultant, but the thing is that you are a consultant. You don't own uh, intellectual property. Consultant mm -hmm. is not intellectual property. So for actually uh, getting the startup visa program. Hi. Uh, hello. Um, in order to actually get into the startup visa program, uh, you uh, need to get intellectual property. And usually, consultant companies don't have intellectual property. Uh, so that's one of the things. You need to be scalable. And scalability requires uh, you know, that you have a technology company that, that actually helps you with, with that part. Uh, for Eric, sorry, I'm trying to get up there. I uh, want to start with a compost box uh, here for everyone commercialized in Canada. Uh, you can always open a company in Toronto uh, if your compost bags have a technology base, uh, you know, you can take a look of the programs. Again, it has to have intellectual property um, in, in between all this. Um, Okay, uh, the sources of the stories for the companies that already participated at LinkedIn, uh, that's the easiest way uh, for you to actually see everything. We have some of the stories in our website, but most of the stories actually are shared in LinkedIn. And if you look for Latin startups, you will find there most of the stories and the most recent and the old ones uh, from back in 2017. Uh, there are a lot of information there from all the, um, most of the companies that have passed through the program. Oops, no going down. Uh, what are the success stories with the companies? Okay, I, we have too many success stories with the companies and I, we are very proud of all of those that uh, you know, have made it and have incorporated here. But I can tell about, for example, the three uh, that are right now under the Sarah Visa program. And please consider that we just got the designation in February. Um, so we have a health tech company from Brazil. 
we have a fintech company from Mexico and we have a fashion tech company from Brazil as well into the startup visa program. Uh, all of them have got into different programs in Canada. They have started to grow business in a very, uh, very small time, especially a fashion tech company. Um, they just have been in the program for three months. They are already selling in the market, which is very unusual. Usually companies take a little bit longer to start, uh, you know, getting first customers. And uh, they got into the most important um, program for the fashion tech uh, area here at Ryerson Fishers. And uh, sorry, uh, Fashion Zone uh, from Ryerson. And from that company, uh, the other two companies, for example, have entered to important programs as Accelerator uh, Center, uh, Communitech, uh, the DMC in, in the case of the fashion tech company, and Mars Discovery District. Uh, so we, we believe that those companies are doing spectacular here in the market. There are some other companies that they haven't entered necessarily through the startup visa program because there are other type of visas that we can facilitate as well, uh, you know, for startups. Uh, so for example, the intercompany transfer or the work permit or the skilled workers also are all alternatives for people that want to enter into the program. Uh, now, Do you have any program that takes equity instead of No, we don't have programs with equity. Uh, fortunately, we, uh, most of the uh, um, you know, non-profit organizations, because we are non-profit, uh, we cannot take equity uh, over the, uh, the startups. And uh, you know, in the market here in Canada, uh, most of the companies that, that are actually accelerating or incubating um, don't have equity as, as the point to actually enter into uh, the program uh, because it's very difficult to see if the company actually is going to be successful in the market and when uh, the return of that investment is going to come out. Uh, you know, so it, it's just difficult. <laughs> Uh, no, the application for 2020 um, is, is going to open in September. In September, by the way. Sorry, it was a mistake there. Done. Um, okay, Daniela, I will send the, uh, uh, the link, uh, you know, to everyone uh, that uh, actually joined it through uh, Eventbrite. And we sent the link there. You can find information. But if you Google it, it's that a Visa Canada, you will see uh, that is a link, and the, the link actually uh, put there the requirements for, for the companies. Um, if export is not a technology company, so uh, Eric, um, the, the type of companies don't necessarily match with the startup visa program. In our company, uh, Kenza has legal consulting. We have two different legal consulting uh, people. Uh, so, Carlos, sorry, I'm going to mute you. Um, yeah, so, sorry, I continue with the, the, the questions. Uh, so, again, uh, export Eric from Peru to Canada, cafe or quinoa, that's not technology. And that, I'm sorry, is not, um, uh, you know, uh, part of the criteria to, to actually enter to this country under the Sara Visa program has to be technology uh, related. So I think I finished with all the questions, but I don't know if anyone else have any other question about uh, the program. I'm going to put here, uh, you know, our email. So you guys can, in any time, send a question about this webinar. And if you actually, uh, Daniela, this is not our special requirements. Uh, so this is what the government is actually asking. Sorry, Mario, I have to mute you. Um, this is not special requirements from us. Uh, it's this special requirement from the government uh, that you require to have an intellectual property in between all of them because it has to be a technology company. Consulting, again, is not a technology company uh, for the standards of the, uh, uh, of the uh, government. Okay? Uh, it has to be a scalable business. Um, so if it's scalable, it means that you can grow fast 
really fast consulting is not a type of thing that grows really fast because it's very personal it takes you know person to person to actually grow uh, you know consulting uh, company so that's why it's, it's not applicable for the startup visa program uh, now you can look further about intellectual property and um, you know in in general and about the requirements but that's specific requirement from the government so we uh, we gotta be clear about this point because we don't want to mislead anyone on this part An important export or consulting don't qualify yeah thank you Perla. so again um Yes, Eric, I'm going to put here our email, okay? Contact at natamstartups.org. And there, uh, you know, all, all you guys can actually send us questions. Uh, if you have more particular questions about this webinar, okay? Just be free to send us questions. We are happy to uh, listen, uh, you know, about you guys. Uh, if you have any information that you haven't seen, uh, in the um, uh, in the website, uh, it depends. Uh, our our sign. Uh, the ed tech company can be uh, in intellectual property. Now, um, for some of you, uh, uh, to make clear about the concept of in inter intellectual property. Um, so, could you be successful so far from my comp? Could Daniela, I don't understand your question 100%, but I'm going to uh, answer the other question first. Uh, you know, intellectual property is when you create software or hardware from scratch. Uh, like, you are not working over other software, you are actually creating everything from scratch and you own that, that product or that service. Uh, you know, that's unique in the market, no, it, nobody else uh, actually own that you know for example if you are building a website you're building that website on WordPress for example that's not intellectual property related because it's uh, you know built in uh, other software that is uh, actually WordPress uh, should I attend an element kind of elevate is is amazing uh, Victor uh, so it's one of the most important events we have in the year so if you go to Elevate, uh, please let us know. We'll be uh, around. So it's, it's a lot of uh, uh, people uh, that actually go to Elevate, and it's one of the feature events that we have in Toronto. So definitely, if you want to go to Elevate, it's a, it's a good idea to go. Um, OK, uh, Daniela, you have a software with 3,000 customers. That's not. Uh, how do you define that as a consulting? <laughs> it's, it's different from what you said at the beginning. <laughs> uh, E-commerce and uh, trading companies qualify for the program. Again, uh, Mario, if it's uh, intellectual property uh, um, involved, yes, it qualifies into the program. Uh, Kenza says, I have my MVP, uh, provisional patent regarding the yeah, that, that is, that's actually, uh, you know, uh, what we are looking for, that actually you have a provisional patent. That's a good thing, uh, you know, for you to start into the program. Uh, did you guys are uh, listening? Because Sachin says that it's breaking up, but hopefully most of you are listening. Uh, yes, uh, we are recording this session and uh, we are going to share with all of you. So Daniela, uh, about could you bring successful software from my country? Yes, uh, if you're from Chile, I believe that you mentioned it before. We actually have had Chilean companies and we are having one coming in September. So they, they are coming, they are joining the program, it's all cool. Uh, ideas don't apply into the program because you haven't um, uh, actually proved your idea, Galaxy. Um, if um, 
I, I guess your name is no galaxy, <laughs> but it's how it shows there. So that's why I said that. Uh, but, but I want to let you know that, uh, you know, ideas not, don't apply just because you haven't proven the, the market locally. So we require for you to uh, prove the market locally. Any other questions, guys? Uh, Okay, um, the level of English for all of us. Uh, so Daniela, uh, the level of English is a conversational level. You know, as far as you can have a conversation with another person, it's okay. Uh, everybody has an accent, so don't be worried about your accent. It's more that you understand the other person. Uh, yes, Kenza, I already, uh, you know, share with everyone the uh, contact uh, at latamstartups.org. So uh, you can actually, uh, you know, go and email us if you have any other question. Okay, Sachin, if you are well established in the Middle East and you want to, you know, expand, if you meet the criteria, uh, you are more than welcome to apply to the program. Um, Arsalan, uh, so if you all have a permanent license, uh, license um, that depends, uh, yeah, a highly customized. It's going to be protected by a software screw. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes those cases, uh, Arsalan is, is, is a bit difficult. It must be that you own the patent because when it's partially owned, it's difficult to get investment over those type of companies, that's why. Eric, uh, you said that uh, you want to start your business. Well, it depends. Uh, you know, if you want to start your business in Toronto, you want to bring your family, that's okay. That's very personal for every uh, person that wants to actually go and do that. Uh, Sashin, the details of the criteria were shared at the beginning of the webinar, and I know that we uh, we had problems at the beginning of the webinar with the time frame that we gave to you guys. So. You are going to get a recording session uh, where you are going to see the criteria from the uh, beginning of the webinar. So, yes. Okay, uh, for, for the last one, uh, last comment, uh, again, um, thank you for the details, but at this point, we don't require to see these details. Uh, so. Uh, we just need for you to go through the information we have given you and if you feel like that your company has a, a criteria, has met the criteria, you are welcome to apply for the, for the next program next year. So, um, so guys, I think uh, we have given the information at this point uh, about the uh, general programs that we are running right now. Again, please take in consideration we have Express Bus Bootcamp coming in October. So if you're a fintech company, we'll be welcome to, to come and be part of that, uh, you know, that bootcamp in particular. Um, Luis Fernando, what type of vendors are going to be presented and how easy is to demo text in Canada company? <laughs> uh, we have vendors from all different type of sectors. Uh, they uh, come from IoT, fintech, uh, health tech, uh, biotech, like they, they are really, we are agnostic in sectors. We sometimes uh, don't take, uh, for example, creative industries, uh, video gaming and all that because it's not scalable. Uh, but, uh, you know, other than that, we are more, more open, you know, to any other uh, sectors. About, you know, the demo test, uh, how can I, like how you do this in Canada, all the companies that pass through programs, they all pitch. Uh, we have a experience uh, doing uh, this part in the, in the market and it's, um, it's challenging, it's challenging, but they all finish doing it. Thank you, Albert, for uh, your comment. Yeah, uh, Perla just po pointed out that um, uh, that we have 15 uh, status per bootcamp. Uh, we have reached our maximum capacity uh, this September. That's why we are not receiving more companies. Uh, 
but for each uh, bootcamp that's the maximum capacity. And again, I'm going to put here that 15% um, of the startups that apply to the program usually are, usually are received, uh, are accepted. So that's the percent of companies that actually uh, are being accepted into the program. Oh, sorry, I kind of put it like just for such <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone there. Okay. Um, if there is no any other question, I'm going to finish here. Thank you so much for attending the webinar and thank you for waiting for us to fix up the, the problems that we have. Uh, but, uh, you know, not sure who entered there, Hilario. I'm going to mute you <laughs> for a minute. Sorry. Um, but again, if you have any other questions, uh, what are relationship marketplace startups in Canada right now? What are the relationships to marketplaces? That's a very, very wide question, Victor. <laughs> so there are many marketplaces, uh, startups. Um, not sure exactly uh, what do you mean with that part. <laughs> if you can elaborate, I can answer your question, but yeah. Um, Unfortunately, we have to stop here and we have to leave because we have other uh, commitments today. But uh, again, thank you so much for waiting and being patient uh, with uh, all the information we have to pass. Um, so we will be reaching out to you guys and please be free to contact us if you have any questions regarding this webinar. More information are in our website. By the way, the website is going to uh, change uh, you know, in the next uh, two weeks. So if you see something different, so don't worry. <laughs> it's the same information, it's just a different landscape that we have. Uh, but, um, you know, applications are going to be open soon. And when you actually, uh, you know, um, if you actually are in the newsletter, uh, you are going to see uh, when applications are open. Thank you again. And uh, I hope to, uh, you know, hear from you guys in the future. Okay.